this video, we're going to focus on uh, getting the cabinet section set up. And by cabinet sections, I mean in these particular types of props, you know, they usually have sets of drawers or doors or decorative items. If I look at my reference here, uh, this particular prop has uh, four sections in it. And um, like this one over here has only three. So we want to give the user that ability um, to choose what they want. I don't want to hard code it in there or it wouldn't be procedural. So um, let's go and get all that set up. So we, there's a few steps to this. Uh, in this one, we're just going to divide it up into sections first. So um, to start with, I'm going to be using this particular piece of geometry that we have in this null node here. Uh, that basically is the front facing primitive. So let's put that into an object merge node over here. I'm going to say get front prim. We don't need any transform information. And I'm just going to drag and drop that into that first object one slot there. Cool. All right. So in order to do this, I need to utilize an add node. And the reason why I want to do that is because I just want to turn these into curves. So I'm going to delete all the geometry, but keep the points, uh, do a by group and set this to group of endpoints. And that'll give us those top two, which allows me then to resample this, right? So we can resample this and put this on maximum segments. And this will allow us to then create primitives uh, per section. So you can see here, if I turn my point numbers, uh, we have nice even sections now. And I went ahead and created a section count here. So I'm going to go and copy this parameter and paste it into the segments there. All right. So that way now I can control it from my controls. Awesome. Uh, and then we can go and skin this now to get primitives. And this is going to be useful because each one of these primitives has a, an ID. And what I'm, my goal here is to make it so that the artist or end user who's using this HDA can just type in, you know, zero and say, I want drawers for zero. I want doors for one, and, and maybe I just want a decorative item for uh, number two. All right, so we want to build that in. Uh, so let's, that's the end goal. So let's drop down a reverse node here. Perfect. And then I, I want to inset this, because remember, uh, we have down here, we inset the cabinet area to get this thickness, the width thickness of the cabinet area, which we should actually create a parameter for. So let's go and do that now. And I'm going to create a float parameter. And this is going to be the cab thickness. Like so. Yeah. And the range, I'm going to say 0.01 to 0.2. Seems fine. What do I have currently? Uh, 0.035. And I'm going to leave this one positive. I'm going to leave the um, the interface element positive, so we can just copy this here. I'll paste the relative reference, but then we'll just negate it. We'll negate the channel expression, so that way we can work with a positive number. Beautiful. All right, so let's move back over to the cabinet sections, and let's drop down a poly extrude node. Hook those two guys up, and I'm going to get my thickness value again. And this time I'm going to use it for the inset, and then get rid of the side. So now, if I were to template the entire cabinet here, you can see this primitive is fitting perfectly into the section of the, the cabinets there. Awesome. So the next thing we need to do is we need to take care of these vertical planks, right, that divide up each section, All right, because this isn't the actual whole section. If we were to go build drawers for this, we wouldn't have any uh, vertical sections here or vertical planks. So we need to go and build those guys now. Let's drop down an add node here and uh, untemplate all this stuff. This time I want to um, go and do a group of endpoints here. Yeah, that should give me all the vertical ones. And then we can use a, a group by range node to get the two outer ones here because we don't need those anymore. So I'm just going to call this um, outer for the group name. And we'll keep it on primitives and I'll move the start and end values to one and one and then just invert it. That way we can then go and blast uh, this stuff. Um, you can also use the delete node as well. It's a bit of an older node. Um, 
not actually sure if they have a range in here anymore. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Oh, no, you can do the start and end. Yeah, but then you have to type in expressions, so. The group by range is much faster with a, a blast note there. All right, so let's drop down, down a sweep note. And I'm going to set this guy to use the ribbon surface type there. Then go into the construction tab and set this to the z-axis so they're facing forward. All right, and then we don't need any columns. And then I want this guy to be that same thickness, right? So this thickness right here. So I'm going to copy this parameter and paste it in there. Perfect. So again, that's why it's good to keep this value positive and you know only negate it if you need to inside of the network, not up here, not in your interface elements. Awesome. So then let's go and do a poly extrude. And I think we can just use that same thickness value. So let's do that again and see what we get. We'll do a distance paste relative reference, but again, I want to negate this one here. And then uh, we will output the back so we get a, a solid object there. And then we can reverse those guys. Like so, let's template our final mesh to see how this is coming along. Yeah, so yeah, it all matches now. Like all the widths match and stuff. Nice and procedural. Very cool. So let's UV map those guys. So I'm going to copy my original one here that I had. Well, actually, let's get the latest version over here because I believe that's where I set the uh, group transfer to overwrite. Well, at some point here, we should probably turn that into an HDA. And how do we do there? Let me get the uh, original one over here. Oh, uh, you know what? We probably need a third option in, t in that. Because um, remember, we've just been dealing with um, X and Z. So we need another option for Y now. So let's do that. So let's uh, move this out. I'm going to move this guy over. I'm going to set this up so that it's a little bit taller in Y this time. And set up my seams for this guy. So let's clear this out. Select that little button there. And I am going to make the main seam right here. And we want to do these guys get peeled off. Yeah, there we go. That should be everything. Beautiful. And now I'm going to look for whether or not, let's do another option here. We're going to say if size dot y is greater than uh, size dot z and size dot y is greater than size dot x then uh, at switch i'm just going to copy this up here is equal to two yeah so it's, it's selected that one so now our uv should be better yeah perfect that's what i'm talking about all right, so let's take let's go back to our perspective view by hitting one on the keyboard, and there we go. So now we've got uh, our verticals there, and now what we need to do is actually cut it out of this particular um, object, and actually we want to cut it out of the original up here. Yeah, because I don't want those extra points in there. So this was just for those vertical struts, or not struts, uh, uh, planks. All right, so let's do a boolean. And we're going to boolean this guy, so that goes, goes into the first input there. And we're going to take our vertical struts and boolean them out. Oh, we do need the um, the inset there, so let's do this. Yeah, there we go. Now I'm going to actually make sure that these guys are just a bit bigger, just to ensure that we get a, a clean 
a boolean cell. Let's drop down a transform node here. I'm just going to move this off to the side. You can also just do an optic merge if you don't want to cross your streams. And uh, sorry about that. Move this guy over here. Yep, like so. Same difference. All right, let's uh, go into our pivot transform here, and we're going to do a dollar CEX and a dollar CEY and a dollar CEZ. Very cool. And with that now, so the pivot now, if I hit enter with the transform node selected, is right in the center there, which is great. And um, what I can do now is just take the scale and just make these guys a little bit bigger. Yeah, like so, and a little bit taller. Don't need to go crazy with it, though. So I just make sure it's a nice, clean cut. All right, so there we go. We got uh, our sections all cleared out there, which is perfect. So what I'm going to do is leave this off to the side. This is where we're going to start building in drawers and doors and stuff. This is going to be our vertical planks over here. So I'm going to call this out vert planks. Beautiful. Let's put a uh, net box around that. And we will call this uh, vert uh, planks. Keep wanting to say struts. Actually, that's fine. Just like that. Make it a little bit wider. Cool. And we'll add it to our assembly. So I'm going to add another slot and just drag and drop that guy into there and take a look. Look at that. Uh, let's go make sure all of our parameters are working so far. So it's uh, bevel mount should be fine, though we should put a bevel on to those vertical guys. So let's just copy our notes so we don't have to write the uh, expression anymore. And let's just make sure this is all working. That looks good. Yep. And our width, that looks good. Yep. Depth, it's working perfect. Our width thickness, uh, that's down here. Such a subtle element to it. That looks good. Uh, the cabinet height looks good. That might be too much of a minimum value, but whatever. We've got that front peak. That's working perfect. Our thickness is working perfect. Yep, that looks good too. That's working. Yeah, everything looks like it's still working. Great. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to close the video out there and move on to the next where we really start to dive into creating these uh, drawers and everything. All right, thanks so much.